MSU holding the Javelinas of Texas A&M Kingsville to just 186 total yards. No, I'm going to bring in head coach Cody Slater. Coach, give me the scouting report. What did you see in the Graham game that you're going to try to exploit tonight? How about them Cowboys? How about them? It feels good to say that. Oh, yeah, it does. It's been a while. And then went on to finish the best they ever have in school history. And I bet you I can make it to Kay Yeager in less than two and a half minutes. Ready? Go. And for the first time in something like eight years, you're not starting the season at the NHL Showcase in Minnesota. You're starting here at home. What's that going to be like? Well, and I'm back. Told you I could make it. The Rangers came into today trailing Oakland by a game and a half in the AL West. If you build it, he will come. If you build it, he will come. The most famous line from one of the most famous sports movies ever made. Well, if you were watching the Red Sox game last night, you probably saw David Ortiz pretty much go ham on a telephone in the dugout. Alex, take it away. He wasn't out there for Quidditch. That's for sure. I'm he glad. missed out. Yeah. I'm glad that's you a sport did. that I don't have to cover after <laughs> seeing the video. <laughs> Last year, Midwestern State's undefeated season came to an end in an overtime first round playoff loss at home against Northwest Missouri State. In that game, MSU kicker Greg Saladino missed a 27 yard field goal that could have sealed the win for the Mustangs. Now, that kind of miss could break the spirit of even the most headstrong kicker. So, how's Saladino doing? Well, so far this year, he's perfect. You know, I'm using it this year as motivation for myself. Uh, I'm taking it as a uh, step forward uh, where I can just only go up from here and uh, better myself as a kicker for MSU. And that's last year. This is this year. We're in the new chapter of our season, a new chapter of his life, and new year. And what's happened last year is gone. According to his stats, last year isn't just gone. It may as well have never existed. He's 7 of 7 on field goals this year to go along with hitting 16 of 16 on PATs. And his teammates say when you have a kicker as reliable as Saladino, it takes a lot of pressure off the offense. We don't have to press to score touchdowns even though that's what we want, but if we so happen to get stopped, then, then we can trust and fully trust that Greg's going to make it, and he's been doing that consistently now. We expect to score points, but I mean, when we don't get points on the board, we can count on Saladino to, to make those points, and it does take some pressure off us. And, uh, I think he's an amazing kicker, and, and it help us, he helps us a lot. In sports, being a kicker is such a unique position because you can essentially wait around an entire football game for one huge moment. Some kickers have various superstitions. I asked Saladino if he has any before he goes out to kick. I usually have a routine. Uh, Usually like on first down I'll do a certain thing, second down I'll do a certain uh, another uh, warm up type deal. As for whether the two time Lone Star Conference special teams player of the week thinks about the fact that he has yet to miss this season. No, I'm just uh, just doing what I do, come out here and practice, uh, just trying to keep my mind on uh, doing my job this year for uh, Midwestern and uh, you know whatever comes out of it. Uh, comes out of it. This week Saladino takes his leg east where the Mustangs will face the West Alabama Tigers. With the Sports Spotlight, Alex Zanes, KFDX 3 Sports. Are you ready? I got to show. Well, the Rangers are facing a must-win game today versus the Angels to force a play-in game for the second AL wildcard spot. And what better place than Arlington at the Rangers ballpark? And what better person to be on the mound than you, Darvish? Here is Giovanni Soto, who lines one to the gap in right center. And Adrian Beltre comes around. He's going to score the go-ahead run, 3-2 Rangers. Now 4-2 in the eighth. Beltre at the plate, and he drives one way out to center field. And that is out of here for a solo home run. Rangers go up 5-2. to two. two batters later. Soto up again, and he crushes one to left field. That leaves the yard for another run. And the Rangers up 6-2. Then Joe Nathan, he's the closer, and he is in to close this one out. He gets the fly ball from Cole Calhoun to end it. And the Rangers stay alive. They force a playing game for that second wild card spot. So here's how it happened today. The Blue Jays and the Rays. The Rays also needing a win. And in the first, Jose Lobatone hits a two-run double off the center field wall. Delman Young and Matt Joyce both score 5-0 Rays. And the Rays roll in this one 7-6 the final. So on to the Indians who had that one game lead heading into today. And Cleveland top of the first. Nick Swisher, they don't waste 
any time do the Indians. A two-run home run off Scott Diamond to score Michael Bourne and the Indians get things started early and often. Five to one, the final. The Indians win their final ten regular season games. So tomorrow, what's in store for the Rangers? Well, it is a seven o'clock game at Rangers Ballpark, the home game for Texas. The winner of this one, the one game playoff will face Cleveland on Wednesday. Well, the Dallas Cowboys traveled to Qualcomm Stadium today to face the San Diego Chargers. Dallas trying to move to three and one on the season. And the Cowboys love being 500 for the season, but they're trying to stay away from that today. Second quarter, San Diego up 10-7. Romo to Des Bryant over the middle. Bryant takes it 34 yards for the touchdown. He's having a great season so far. Second of the game, 14-10 Cowboys. The Cowboys would lead 21-10 at the half, but back comes Phillip Rivers and the Chargers. He hits Danny Woodhead for his second touchdown, 21-20 Cowboys. San Diego would take the lead on a field goal, and in the fourth, Rivers off play action, steps up, hits Antonio Gates in stride for the 56-yard touchdown to put the Chargers up 30 at 21. Under three minutes left, Romo, the last chance he hits the rookie, Terrence Williams over the middle. He reaches out for the goal line, but fumbles. Come on, Rook. Can't do that. So the Chargers get the win. Dallas back to 500, 2-2 two and two on the season. And now, here's your Silver Star Nation reports. Well, Mickey Spagnuolo is in San Diego with the Cowboys today. He's here to tell us how it all went down. Well, some very sad news to report tonight. Monday head track coach Ronnie Lawrence passed away this morning. Hundreds showed up at Scruggs Field tonight for a candlelight vigil past players, coaches, and Knox County residents arrived to show support for the Lawrence family. Lawrence was the defensive coordinator of Monday's state championship football team, along with winning three state track championships as head coach of the Moguls. This was his 11th year coaching at Monday. Lawrence also graduated from Monday High School in 1986. On Friday night, Lawrence watched his son play in his first varsity football game. Lawrence leaves behind his wife Jamie and his children Candace, Mitchell, and Casey. Mitchell, a junior on the Moguls football team. Sometimes something that starts out as a pastime can turn into something more. There might be no better example of this than former holiday eagle Vanessa McCoy. I started weightlifting about six years ago, and I started doing it just as strength training for track and field, and I just fell in love with it. So I switched sports, and it's been kind of an up and down battle over the years. Um, I've had a lot of big successes. Some of those successes include winning three bronze medals in the 2008 World University Games, in addition to a slew of others. But her most notable achievement, winning the 2011 National Championships. Next step, Olympic trials, right? Well, she never made it there, thanks to being sidelined with injuries. It is easy to get discouraged, but I really love the sport of weightlifting. And every day I go in and train, I just enjoy it so much and I have fun. And even whenever I was injured, it is hard to keep going. It's hard to push through. Vanessa came home for Christmas, but now resides at the Olympic Training Center in Marquette, Michigan, training for her goal of making the Olympic team and earning a trip to Rio for the 2016 Games. But powerlifting isn't her only passion. Um, I'm opening a gymnastics center um, in Marquette, Michigan. They currently do not have one, and I think that that's very unfortunate for the kids there. The maximum number of athletes that can qualify for the Olympic Games is four, and Vanessa says she knows it's a hard road ahead of her, but that having her family and friends behind her makes all the difference. With the Sports Spotlight, Alex Sains, KFDX 3 Sports.